My name is Sam Otten, and with me is Jason Book. Hey, Jason, how you doing today? Hey, I'm good, Sam. How are you? Not too bad at all. In this video, we're going to be talking about Batman issue 52, which is the 52nd issue in the new 52, so kind of a special culmination. And this is actually going to basically close the book on the new 52 run of Batman, um, which was Scott Snyder all the way through 51, and we reviewed issue 51 recently. And now this one is kind of a one-shot to wrap things up, and we have James Tinian IV coming in to write. Riley Rosmo is on art, uh, pencils, and Ivan Placencia and Jordan Boyd did the colors. Um, this is an issue called The List. So, Jason, what'd you make of this issue, which is kind of a look back at the formative years of Bruce Wayne and his a little bit of his training, and then he has this um, issue going down with Crypsis during the issue. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, Sam. Um, I thought that, you know, when you do something like Batman's story that, you know, parts of this origin and everything have been told so many times, you can find a new wrinkle to kind of explore it. Uh, it was really cool. Um, I, I liked the angle of this list as something that he would keep in a safety deposit box and something that was super special to him. And I wasn't sure at the beginning if it was like a book that someone had given him and then you see it's actually stuff that he's writing and uh, it was super well done. I really enjoyed it. I thought the artwork was quite different and kind of really fit the story. Um, you didn't have, need to know anything about Batman to read this story, which is always cool. And I've read some of James Tinian's work and I enjoyed it, but this one kind of was of a different level of quality to me. So it makes me uh, think that the Batman title's in good hands, I think. Yeah, so for, it is fun to see James Tinian coming on because he's been doing like the Batman and Robin Eternal stuff. But yeah. here he, he takes his hand and I thought it was well constructed. I thought he mm -hmm. used the issue well, like what can you do in one issue? And he's like, well, I can do this sort of character study, have some character moments between Bruce and Alfred. And really, I yeah. think that's the main thing that this issue delivered is those moments with Bruce and Alfred and a little bit of character development. And the Crypsis stuff is just a way to kind of tell that story. It's That's not right. really important for its own sake. Yeah. Um, and some of the other stuff, too, uh, that came in, like, it wasn't really that mysterious what was in the safety deposit no. box. It's like, okay, probably the only thing that's been mentioned in this issue is probably the thing that's in the safety deposit box. <laughs> But yeah, that's yeah. fine, because the point was not to be a mystery. The point was to get connected to Bruce and to see it through the eyes of Alfred and, and him trying to deal with you know the murder of his parents. So I thought it was well-constructed. And like you said, it makes me kind of excited for the Rebirth Batman books, because um, Tom King's going to be on Batman, and he's really good. Um, James Tinian here is going to be on Detective Comics, I believe. And then Scott Snyder is still going to be around doing All-Star Batman so, I mean, I think there's a chance that all three of those might be solid. And so if you're a Batman fan, you've got a lot to look forward to in June. Yeah, I would agree. It's pretty exciting. And uh, another point on this issue I really liked was it seemed to kind of pull on the heartstrings a bit. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that good kind of one-off stories can do well. And sometimes that kind of stuff gets passed over in monthly comics for like the big story arc kind of thing. So it's cool to see something like this come out. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It had some nice writing touches, so there would be the parallels between what he, what was happening for the younger Bruce or during his training, and it would match up nicely with what was happening with Crypsis and the action in present day. Yeah, totally. So they had the uh, feel nothing, and so Bruce in training is like putting himself in this ice cold Canadian. I thought you'd appreciate that uh, waterfall. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then that cuts right to the current Bruce Wayne, Batman, in the rain and getting shot, but he's feeling nothing. But the waterfall transitioned right to the raindrops coming down. I thought it was really nice. Yeah, and totally. There's a lot of cool moments like that. You know? Yeah, another one that I noticed was the let go of everything, you know, where he's saying how to move on, number 21, is let go of everything. Yeah. And he's jumping out of a plane with his gliding wings, and then that cuts right to him, like, leaping off the front of the car. So it's like... If this was a movie, those would have been some, like, match cuts that would have been really slick. Yeah, well done, yeah. And that, that's a cool thing with the story, too, is it worked on a lot of different levels. Like, it could be a story about Batman, or it could be a story about somebody losing their the significant other, just a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship breaking up, or, you know, mm -hmm. any sort of loss in your life. And, um, you know, it, it really kind of translated well, and uh, being a one-off issue like this, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, sometimes you don't expect to get something of that much quality and, and kind of that subject matter in just one issue, but it goes to show you that you can tell a really great story in one issue sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that pulled me out of it a little bit was 
Bruce was literally carrying the book around with him everywhere. Like, even when he's jumping off the plane, he has the book in his arm. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I felt I know, like you right? could connect us to the book with the list and he didn't literally need to have it in every single scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like maybe in that scene, if they had a reason for me carrying it, like the guy was going to throw it out the plane and he's like, no, I need that. And he ran, jumped after it or something, you know? But yeah, I'm with you on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, I mean, overall, it was well constructed. Uh, it was the nice parallels between the different time frames. In terms of connecting back to New 52, um, there's a variant cover that's sort of like an echo of the original Batman number no. one cover from 2011. So it's for the collectors out there, this is definitely a nice issue to have to wrap everything up. Yeah, I like that they're doing the variants like that. Uh, I think the the book we're reviewing next, the Action Comics one, has a variant uh, that, r that riffs on Action Comics number one as well, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, for the books that have reached number 52, it's kind of fitting to do that. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we had that nice wrap-up last issue, and now we have, uh, you know, a, a nice decent wrap-up here as well, so of a different sort. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what they're going to be doing with these new Batman books. Yeah, and uh, overall, I mean, so this closes down New 52 Batman. Um, he's going to have the rebirth, and then that's going to transition into the Batman rebirth era. Um, but I mean, overall, I think this is pretty yeah. good. We've talked in several of our past videos about how this might be one of the strongest Batman runs or the sort of like longest, strongest mm -hmm. Batman runs that we know of. And um, there was an interview that I saw, I think it was at DCComics.com with Tom King and Scott Snyder mm -hmm. talking about how they've really become friends and they're both excited about what they're going to do with Batman and Rebirth. But Tom nice. King called Scott Snyder's run, he called it the best Batman run that's ever happened. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, because it's had so much, like, happening in it, and there's a lot of character development for Batman and Bruce Wayne. Like, it wasn't like some of those Batman runs where it's focusing more on other characters more, or more about Batman and less about Bruce Wayne. It really encompassed stuff from all different generations of Batman without really going against anything that came before it. So that's probably why it's done so well yeah so good stuff um all good things must come to an end and so that happens <laughs> here but we've got a lot of good stuff to look forward to so it's a bittersweet moment i think it'll be okay and we'll have to see you know what we want to follow forward into the rebirth era yeah exactly i'm definitely will be picking at least one of those batman books to to read and review every month uh, or possibly twice a month so there's going to be a lot of good stuff to pick from <laughs> 